I recently got back into racing sims and I'm sick of white knuckling my controller until I have carpal tunnel syndrome and I look like the guy from Scary Movie 2. I gotta race with my strong hand, child. The obvious solution if you have the blood of Mario Andretti coursing in your veins is to get yourself a racing wheel. I'm milking the hell out of her right now. I got two hands on her udders. I'm milking her for everything she's got. Everything you got. Now, generally, when I play racing sims, I ain't playing. I got a full track suit on, gauntlets, and I have the catheter hooked up recycled into my camelbacks. So that way I stay hydrated and don't have to take piss breaks. Check the welds on your roll cage, buckle in your five-point harness, grab yourself some snacks, and get ready to take the pole position. Let's review this bad boy. Well, the unboxing experience, stallions and stallionettes, first of all, there's some very bright, vibrant, cornea popping orange, which will let you know this is going to boost frames per second on your rig. Plenty of extra cardboard in case you wanna have a break dancing battle with your homeboys. And plenty of choking hazards for any small children. Let's go ahead and dispose of that properly. Inside the box, you're gonna get a steering wheel controller that does look and feel incredibly premium and incredibly durable. We'll touch on that in just a little bit, like literally touch on it, like all over the surface area of it. You get an instruction manual with some Egyptian hieroglyphics. Might be Chinese, could be. Now the instruction manual is a little bit of a mixed bag. I'm a bit of a snob or connoisseur when it comes to instruction brochures and pamphlets. And this one strikes a couple chords with me, a couple of positive notes and a couple of G minors, if you will. First of all, it does have a good font. It is easy to read. It does have a little color pop of orange. That's their, their branding or theme color. And it does have pictures. What I don't like, it has an absolute slew of languages and English is buried in the middle. Now I get that this is a global or international product. However, I guess I'm just selfish. I think, I think that my country is the best and it should take priority when it comes to instruction manuals. I know that's not how the world works, but I just like when English is right there up front and center. I got a Patriot's blood in me. Then you have a couple of clamps. These are for BDSM use. So you're gonna use these later with the old lady. Just kidding. These are actually to clamp this onto your desk. Whether it's on PC or console, you do have two different methods of actually mounting this wheel as you want that very sturdily, I don't know if that's a word or not, you want it quite sturdy in its mounting because you are gonna be whipping that wheel around. And the last thing you want is to be in corner three on the last lap trying to overtake on the inside and the thing comes loose off your desk. It, it, it trust me, not fun. So you have these suction cups over here and they suck. Literally, they, they suction real good. As long as it is a piece of furniture, like my coffee table in the living room, which is kind of a slick material. If you have a, if you have a porous material, ASMR for you guys, like this scratchy desk over here, these suction cups literally won't work at all. So I strongly recommend in that case that you use these clamps. Now, one little gripe I have is that these are hard plastic, just like they were on the last steering wheel controller I tested. It will not add very much money to their build cost, to just put a little strip of rubber in here and that way it feels a little bit more secure on your desk and you know it's not scratching the ever living shit out of the bottom of your desk. You have a micro USB cable that's so you can keep your cell phone charged to call your boys and let them know you need a pit crew. Now this bad boy retails for 200 US dollars. However, it is constantly seen on Amazon for about 180 bucks. It's like they're running a continuous promotion or something. Plastics feel a little underwhelming right here on the flat bottom and at the 12 o'clock mark. However, ain't gonna matter because you're gonna be holding the wheel at a nine and three or 10 and two position as you would if you're racing IRL or in real life. This is an absolutely perfect size and diameter. It does snap back to the 12 o'clock position quite quickly. So if you're doing some drifting and whatnot, you'll have no issue. You have a nice band for the 12 o'clock position up here. Great grip on the sides here. Perfect cutouts for your thumb at the nine and three position and a nice little divot or bump here at the 10 and two mark as well. All the face buttons you need for Xbox or PC use. And these are actually really well spaced out and have a nice tactile click or feedback to them. They're not mechanical, they are membrane, but they do feel incredibly clicky and nice. Now paddles, I'm not too fond of. They do have a nice tactile click to them, as you can hear, but they do feel quite cheap and chintzy. They kind of wiggle and flex around in my hand. And I do hope that on their next version or iteration of the steering wheel controller, that they replace these plastic paddles with some nice billet aluminum paddles. I know that will add a little bit to the build cost, in which case it might actually increase the cost for us, the consumer, but trust me, it'll be worth it. But right here, this is what I really like. There is a switch down here that says 900 degrees 
and 270 degrees. So at 270, the wheel is gonna hit full lock, bam, right there, bam, right there. Let's click her over to 900. You're getting 900 degrees of rotation with this wheel. Just like in real life, you're not gonna have to use much inputs to steer, but then when you're going at slower speeds, that is when you will have to rotate the wheel further. Now this wheel actually has multi-platform compatibility, i.e. it works on PlayStation 3, 4, Xbox One, Series S and X, and PC. Switch as well, I'm not really sure what you'd play with this wheel, maybe some Mario Kart or something, but. Now the pedals also do feel incredibly premium. You can use them with the shortened kick panel like this, or it does fold out, and you basically have all this foot space down here. They also have rubberized pads on the bottom that will help you from slipping around if you're on a hardwood floor. Overall, these pedals have a lot of modulation, a lot of control, good feedback, good resistance. Overall, they feel incredibly quality. I will say there is no rubberized coating. This is aluminum with little plastic dots on here. It'd be nice if they had a couple of strips of rubber on there. Granted, you can add that yourself, maybe get some either skateboard grip tape or some kind of little rubberized strips from Amazon. Shoot, I'll have a couple linked in the description below and just stick those on yourself to give you a little bit more grip for when you get really excited and you're starting to heel toe shift down the Nurbur ring. Now the shifter boys, ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh, ho baby. Uh, grabbing the knob here, I don't like the way that sounds. Gra grabbing the shaft, grabbing the base of the shifter, touching the tranny linkages, transmission linkages, Jesus, <clears throat> touching the shifter, if you will. How does it feel, Kevin? You're a tech reviewer. Use your words to articulate, paint a picture of how the product feels. I'm gonna break it down for you, sweetheart. I'm gonna paint you a little picture here. So first of all, this feels like a real short throw shifter. It has very distinct gates for each gear to let you know, okay, I'm in gear. Okay, I'm halfway in gear, I'm not engaged, which feels really good. To get into reverse, you actually push down the shifter and then click over into reverse or R for re Renegade. And this feels incredibly durable, like you can bang out gears quite aggressively and I'm not worried that this is gonna snap off in my hand or anything. Um, this just feels like a real short throw shifter. Oh God, so good to the hand. I love shifting with this thing. I will say one little thing, I wish that the shift knob here was aluminum or at least had some aluminum or leather. Was leather wrapped with an aluminum top instead of just all plastic. I think it would feel a little bit more premium or if they wanted to give you a little spice, have this shift knob be threaded like shift knobs are IRL or in real life and it have two or three different options in the box. So maybe a plastic one like this, maybe a weighted aluminum one, and then maybe like a leather or Alcantara wrapped one as well. I know that would add a little bit to their build cost, but that little attention to detail would stimulate a lot of gamer rods. That's for sure. Awesome. And in case you guys are wondering, it is a six speed manual gearbox with a reverse down and to the right. Mm. All right, a couple things I want to make note of real quick. You're going to see two switches on the shifter, and you might be wondering, Kevin, what the heck are those things for? Well, this one is labeled low, high, and this is specifically for things like trucking simulator as some of those big rigs, those 18 wheelers, if you will. Those have 12, 18, or even in some cases more gears, so you can actually shift between high and low when you're hauling yourself a fat load. So you can ball when you're on a long haul. So you can keep trucking and get to fuck. And then the other one over here has a P for park and basically this sets your electronic handbrake. You know, a lot of newer vehicles actually have a switch or lever that activates the park brake, basically locks the rear wheels. Now one little complaint I have about this immediately before even using it, just looking at it, there's actually two little gripes I have or nitpicks if you will. First of all, the clamps for the wheel are actually a lot deeper as where this is rather shallow. This is at its maximum extension here and it's relatively shallow. So if somebody has a deeper desk than mine because this just barely slides onto my desk and I have a relatively uh, low profile desk, if you will. If you have a thicker desk, this simply will not clamp onto it. So how you're gonna connect this to console, i.e. PlayStation 4 or Xbox One or series, is you are gonna plug in a controller. That's what that micro USB cable was. I cracked a little funny McJokeyton about it being, it being for charging your cell phone. It's not, that is incorrect. It's actually gonna be to connect a controller to the back, which sounds kind of janky, but that's actually really common with these third party peripherals, such as I tested a keyboard and mouse adapter for console and another steering wheel controller. And they all use that method where you have to plug a controller into the back. And basically what that does is it reads all of the key binds or mappings for a PlayStation or Xbox controller and inputs them into this module here. And then you have a telephone or ethernet style cable and that does connect your pedals and your shifter, which are clearly labeled here, but in case these ever get scratched off or ground off or anything, you guys can revert back to this video. The far right over here is for the shifter and this one over here is for the paddles. You do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which will work as a pass-through. So when you are connected, 
to a device, PC or console via this USB cable here, you will be getting audio output through this port right here. Now as for connection to PC is that is Primarily, I would say about 100% of what I'm gonna be using this wheel for is, is streaming racing games. This doesn't have any dedicated drivers, so in essence, it is plug and play. Now, that shouldn't be an issue considering Steam Big Picture Mode basically makes up its own drivers for pretty much generic controllers. So when you Stallions first plug in the PXN steering wheel to the PC, it is going to automatically install drivers and how you will know that it has successfully been bound or paired to the PC is the red LED light on the front will remain solid. Now there's two different modes that you can put this thing into. The first one is called X and the other one is called D. And in order to swap them, you are gonna hold down the mode button on the front of the steering wheel for three seconds and it will flash red and then go solid letting you know it is in the next mode now basically what x is is it simulates it as an xbox one controller so even steam not a generic but it recognized it as a licensed xbox one controller so all of the mappings in the game will be that of an Xbox One controller. So technically the left and right pedals will be the left and right triggers. To get this bad boy working, come up here to the top left where it says Steam, go to settings, and then come over here to controller. Click on general controller settings, and these are actually the settings for big picture. You wanna make sure that you have all of these selected here, all of these boxes checked. And actually it's recognizing it as two controllers right now, not really sure, but it still recognizes it as an Xbox One controller. Now, if I switch modes by holding down that mode switch on the front of the steering wheel, like I mentioned, now it is recognizing it as a generic gamepad. So if a specific game, racing game that you're playing does not work with an Xbox One controller, not a problem. You can literally get this wheel to work with any game by doing these settings here. So. Hold the mode button down to where it goes into D mode, not X mode, and it is now being recognized as a generic gamepad. Click on that, and then click on define layout, and you will see a representation of what it would be on an Xbox controller, and literally just go down and press all the buttons on the steering wheel to map it or bind it to whatever you would like. You are gonna get similar settings if you are in what's called big picture mode, which I'll go into right now by clicking this button right here. Now, if you click on this cog icon, which is behind my face right here, you will go to controller settings and you basically have that same layout that you had earlier where you can define the layout. Jesus, good launch, good launch from the Subaru. All right. Sounds like she might be misfiring on cylinder three, but that's all right. Tires aren't warmed up yet, but not a big deal. Love the smell of petrol in the morning, boys. All right, let's get him on the inside. All right, cool. That was that was unsportsmanlike. Oh, I came in there with a head full of steam. Like a drunken prom day, you don't keep an eye on her. That back end will step out on you, let me tell you. I'm barking up your tailpipe, sweetheart. Ah, oh, damn, I cut track. I'm gonna take a penalty for that. Yeah, I'm getting investigated for corner cutting, guys. I have more integrity than that as a racer. I'm ashamed of myself. The car behind is taking the Joker now. She's squirrely, boy. She's squirrely. Come on, baby. I'm milking the hell out of her right now. I got two hands on her udders. I'm milking her for everything she's got. Everything you got. Everything you got. Everything you got. Everything you got. You ain't cheating. You ain't racing. Or Dale Earnhardt said that. So is the PXN V9 actually worth the money? Is it a good buy at this price point? I would have to say yes, considering it has some key features that you really don't get at the $180 price point. First of all would be, well, a shifter period, but especially an H gate or six speed manual transmission that isn't just a click forward and backward, but actually stays in position in six different gears. Two would be 900 degrees of rotation and the fact you can swap it or switch it between 900 and 270 is pretty sick. And then also the vibration is very, very good. And it does have three pedals. Again, a feature not usually seen in the $180 price point. So the only premium feature that it does not have would be feedback. So it has vibration, which does actually feel pretty good, but it does not have feedback motors, either gear, belt, or direct drive feedback, which basically jerks the wheel when you hit different surfaces. So maybe you lose traction for a minute and the wheel gets very light. And then when you snap back traction, it kind of jerks the wheel a little bit. Or if you run off track, you feel it judder back and forth because you're in the grass or gravel. That to me personally is not a big deal considering whenever I had wheels 
thinking all the way back to the PlayStation 3 era, I had the I had the Driving Force GT wheel for PC and PS3, and I would find myself constantly turning down or completely off the force feedback because it can be a little bit intrusive in games. I get that for racing simulator purist, it gives you the most it gives you the most realistic immersion into that racing scenario. But if you're just trying to be quick or do good at the racing game, a lot of times it, it, it it's jerking you around a lot, which I get again is simulating how it would actually be to drive that vehicle, but it can be a little bit much. So for me, I honestly turned it down or off a lot of the time. So, so for me personally, it's not a big deal that it doesn't have feedback because I would probably turn it down or off anyway. So yes, I do think it is a good buy considering the most comparable wheels are around the 250 to 350 mark. And that's some of the Logitech G series as well as some of the Thrustmasters, which some of them actually don't even include an H gate shifter. You actually have to buy that separately. It's like a 50 or $60 add on. So if you're looking for something with an H gate shifter, three pedals, 900 and 270 degree rotation, pretty good vibration and compatibility for PS3, for Xbox One series and PC. That is another thing I forgot to mention is a lot of these wheels from Logitech and whatnot are specifically blue branded or green branded, i.e. they work with the Xbox and PC, or the PlayStation and PC. This works with both, so that's kind of cool. So overall, as of now, I do strongly recommend this wheel for $180, even at its recommended MSRP of $200. It's not quite of a sweet buy at that price, but it's still a good product. And in my opinion, this is a very, very good entry-level wheel, but I, I'm using air quotes because it has a lot of features that a lot of the mid and higher end wheels have as well, such as 900 degree lock, six speed H gate shifter, and three pedals. So really, if this had a good feedback motor on board, this would be the equivalent of a flagship steering wheel. Also, some of the materials start getting into leather wrapped wheels with aluminum instead of just all plastic and rubber. Also, I would strongly recommend that if you pick up any racing wheel and you're going to start getting serious about racing sims, that you get yourself some kind of a stand. It doesn't have to be some crazy cockpit with an actual Recaro racing chair and fans that blow in your face to simulate wind or anything like that. But this is actually the cheapest one I could find on Amazon with good ratings. And basically, it's just an aluminum frame that has full adjustment for your shifter, your pedals, and your steering wheel. I'm actually gonna be picking one of these up in the near future to go along with this PXN wheel because clamping to my desk, it felt a little bit cramped and I just didn't really feel comfortable. So just a little pro tip or bro tip, if you will. Hey Stallion, so I'm throwing this in at the end here of post editing. I just wanted to add on that I will be doing separate tutorials getting this wheel set up for different games, getting key binds to make sure that your shifter and your clutch pedal is working with all these games. I did walk through how to get it set up in Steam Big Picture, but that was just a general overview. Again, I will be doing tutorials for this wheel in specific games. And then also this is kind of an initial impressions early review. There will be a long-term owner's review coming a few months down the road. If you guys enjoyed this honest product review, liking it will help it to get seen by more people. So this information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, and I will see you tomorrow because I upload daily. Peace.